Here we are in the vineyard in the middle of May, and now it's time to remove excess shoots from the, from the vines. Back in March, when we pruned, we, we pruned two spurs and two buds on each spur. But you'll find out that you'll get quite a few more shoots than those original two. So we want to remove the excess ones and keep one for next year's spur. Now, my vines are situated in east and west rows, and I like to have morning and evening sun uh, shining on the fruit. So I do this by pulling the leaves on the north side, and I'm going to do that now, and it will also expose uh, the shoots where you can see when I pull the excess shoots. So I'm going to pull the leaves, exposing the, the fruit. And when you do this, grapes like sunshine. And, uh, but if it's on the south side, you may burn the fruit. What they've discovered is that the earlier you expose the grapes to the sunshine, the tougher the grapes are and the less chance there is for sunburn. So now we're going to zoom in a little bit on the, on the spurs and, and choose which of the, the shoots that we want to remove. The first one here is the spur that we pruned and we want two shoots from that spur. Here's one, but here there are two. So we want to remove one of those. So we have one here and one here. Now we want to save a shoot for next year's spur. And we want to choose one that's as close to the cordon as possible. So here's one here and one here. Uh, this one on the back is probably a little better, so I'm going to remove the front one. Now you notice that at this time of the year, I can very easily pop these off without cutting them. And it makes it a lot easier. If we move to the next spur, we, here's the spur. We have one here. Again, we have two on that spur. And I want to remove one of those. There's one low on the back. I want to remove that one. And we're left with two shoots on the spur and one on the cordon for next year's spur. And as we move along, we do the, that same thing. Here we have the spur, two shoots, and we have two at the base. So I'm going to take one of those off and save the other one for next year's spur. The next one has only one on the spur and one at the base, and we're going to keep this for next year's spur. On the, on the next one, we have two on the spur and one on the base. That's perfect. We'll keep that there. This one is a little bit close to the, the split and the cordons, and even, I'm going to take that one off. As we move to the next one, you'll see the spur, one strong one, and two together here, and I want to remove one of those, and then there's one at the base for next year's spur. And we do that same process as we move along the cordon on each one of them, removing any weak ones and making sure that we keep a uh, shoot for next year's spur. Now we do have sometimes have shoots come out on the bottom of the cordon and we want to remove those uh, as much as possible. So that's the process of shoot thinning and that gives you a very balanced fruit arrangement on the cordons. Now if your vine is not very vigorous then you want to pull the fruit off the cane that you save for next year's spur. That will drive the energy to make that very strong cane and make a very nice spur for next year. So that's the process of shoot thinning and uh, hopefully it will generate a good crop for me this year.